Hey folks, when I was first learning about the Tidyverse and Dplyr and ggplot2 and all the other great tools, um, one of the things that just really captivated me was the ability to use group by and summarize together to aggregate my data and then output a summary statistic. Like, you know, I've got a whole bunch of values for different categories. I want to know the average uh, value across each of those different categories. Group by summary just fit the bill. And I can remember thinking like, why do they have group by and summarize as two separate functions? I only ever use them together, right? I would never use group by by on itself, right? Well, would you? <laughs> in today's episode, what I'm gonna show you is how you can use group by in a number of different contexts other than just group by and summarize. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do today. We are going to use our weather data, looking at temperature data, to see a variety of ways that we can use group by to aggregate our data into different categories and then do a variety of downstream manipulations of those data. Sure, we'll do summarize, but we'll also do other things along the way. So I'm over here in our studio. I have the R script that I actually wrote for the last episode, which allowed me to get data uh, from a weather station close to where I live in southeastern Michigan. Um, if you want this code and everything else that goes along with this project, down below in the description, there's a link to instructions on how to do that. I'll even put a video up here to, to help you figure it all out. I encourage you to plug in your uh, latitude and longitude for where you live. So in that last episode, we talked about removing outliers and different ways that we could use to detect outliers. So I'm going to clean up this R script to remove a lot of the diagnostic stuff I had from the previous episode so that I can use this script to populate other scripts because I'm gonna use my local data for this episode and a number of other episodes. So I'll go ahead and remove uh, these manipulations where I was turning certain dates into NA values. I'll also remove that drop NA and I need a closing parentheses on my mutate here. I can get rid of that filter. And then I think all this other stuff was various ways of plotting the data, which I'll go ahead and delete and I'll save my R script. Uh, one thing to point out about this is that it does pull data down from the noaa.gov website um, at two different places. I actually wanted to record this video last week, but when I was going to record it, I experienced the downside of using data live up on a website. The NOAA website was down, so I couldn't pull it down. So I was getting an error message. So again, that's a trade-off between having the data locally on your computer, that it can it's local, but it can get a bit data versus using the data as it is up on the web that it's live, right? It's updated to the latest day, but the website might be down or it might go down permanently. There's trade-offs, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, save this um, as localweather.r. I'll go ahead and create a new R script, and then I will do source and then code forward slash localweather.r. What I am doing is I am assuming that I am running my R scripts from my project root directory. Where's my project root directory? Well, that's the directory with my .rproj file, right? And so I don't have to change directories in and out of code. I think I've talked about this uh, a long time ago. Um, maybe I'll put a link in here about why you don't wanna use things like setwd. So we'll go ahead and run this. So it took a few moments to download the data and get it cleaned up. Uh, we have this stored as local uh, weather. Um, and if I go ahead and run that, I see that I've got this data frame with date, Tmax, PRCP, and snow. Uh, Tmax is now in Celsius. PRCP and snow are in millimeters. Um, if you go to the upper right corner, this environment tab, you'll see the variety of values that I have stored um, and that these all came over from sourcing code local weather. Also, because local weather had in it tidyverse glue and lubridate, those are already loaded and I don't need to put those at the top of my R script. Everything is good to go and we are ready to proceed. At the beginning of this series of episodes, we were using data accumulated by NASA looking at global temperature anomalies. And those data, like the temperatures, were normalized for data between 1951 and 1980. So that if you looked at the average temperature between those two dates, uh, the average would be zero, right? And so everything then is relative to that. And so what I'd like to do is start out by making a plot with you that across the x-axis has the years and the y-axis has my temperature anomaly. Um, and we will plot the average annual temperature normalized to 1951 to 1980. And again, we're going to start out using group by and summarize. So let's go ahead and take our local weather. I'll go ahead and do a select on date and Tmax. 
just to keep everything simple. So I need to get the year out of my date and I can do that using functions from Lubridate, which we saw before. So we can do mutate year equals the year function on date. And what we see now is that we get the year. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the data from 1891 and 2022 because those are partial years. As I'm recording this, it's in July. Um, and as you can see from 1891, it started October 1st. So I can do that with a filter year not equal to 1891 and year not equal to 2022. Now, uh, if you're watching this in a year, you'll wanna do 2023. But what would be even better than 2022 would be to use my new favorite function, which is today. And so we see that today is January or July 22nd, 2022, and that outputs it as a date. And so then I can do year on today and I get 2022, right? So I can say this year uh, is that. And so then I can plug that into here as this year. And now I've removed the data from 1891 and 2022. I can prove this to myself by sliding this into tail and seeing that it ends uh, December 31st of 2021. Good. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and get the average temperature for each year. This is the traditional way that I learned group by, which is to use it with summarize. So we'll do group by year, and then we'll do summarize. Um, and hold on, let me run the group by just so you can see what this all looks like. And so the output looks identical basically to what we had before. There's one subtle difference in that it tells us in the output that our data is being grouped by the year and there's 130 year categories, right? From 1892 to 2021, that's 130 years. And now what we can do with summarize is get the average T max. So I'll do T max equals mean on T max. And now we get a two column data frame with the year and the T max. If I go ahead then and pipe this over to ggplot, I can do AES X equals year, Y equals T max, and then geomline to get our line plot. So that gives us a line plot, a lot like what we saw for the global temperature anomalies. But at the same time, it's a bit more noisy. Again, when you're averaging over the globe, things tend to average out and smooth out, obviously, right? So again, our temperatures go from 12 degrees up to about 17 degrees. Um, and what we'd like to do is to normalize it so that between 1951 and 1980, the average temperature in there is zero degrees. So we can say, you know, the year 2022 is so many degrees warmer than it was back in, you know, between 1951 and 1980. So I'm going to insert after my summarize. Um, and again, just to remind ourselves what this looks like, it's a two column data frame with the year and the T max. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a mutate. I'll say normalize range equals, uh, and it's gonna be a logical, right? And so we'll say year greater than or equal to 1951 and year less than or equal to 1980. Uh, you could pick any range that you want. I think in one of the exercises we did, we used a more recent period. Um, you know, you can you can do what you want to do. And so we see that for 1892, it's all false, right? So what I might normally do would be to create a separate data frame that gives me the average temperature between 1951 and 1980, and then use that in another mutate to subtract that from my current Tmax value. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to do that all within this single pipeline. So how can I do that? Well, what we could do would be to say normalize uh, mean. And so what I'll then do will be to do a sum. So the, so the mean is the total of the values divided by the total number of observations, right? So what I could do would be to take the sum of T max. And so if I did sum of T max over N say, right, that would give me the, um, the average temperature between 1892 and 2021. That's not what I want. I only want it within that normalized range. So what I could do is to take Tmax and multiply that by normalize range. And so the thing to know about false values and true values is that false is zero, true is one, right? So if I have a Tmax value and I multiply it by a one because it's within the range, then I'll get that value, right? And then I can then divide that by the scaling factor of the number of values in the normalized range. Well, I can't use the n function, but what I could do would be to do sum on normalized range. Again, if a value is true, the numerical value of true is one. So if I sum up all those normalized range values, I'll then get the total number of observations. This then gives me the normalized mean of 14.9 degrees. 
And so what I can now do is to take t max and subtract that from my normalized mean. So I'll say t diff equals t max minus normalized mean, giving us the temperature difference for each year. I can then pipe this into my ggplot, changing my y from t max to t diff and geome lines there. And so now what we see is we basically have the same line plot, right? So if I toggle back and forth, uh, there's a little bit of movement, and that's mainly because of uh, the size of the values on the y-axis, but the line itself is identical, right? But what's changed is in this version, we have a zero line, right, between 1951 and 1980, so the average temperature in there is set to zero. And so we might say that for the year 2021, here outside of Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, the average temperature was about a degree and a half warmer than it was between the years of 1951 and 1980, right? We can look at the overall trend in this by adding a smooth line. So we go ahead and do geom smooth, and we get a fitted line through this. There's a little bit of a dip, and actually between the years about 1951 and 1980, it does appear to be fairly flat in there, um, but it seems to get warmer over the first half of the century, and then even warmer over the second half of the last century going on into 2020. Again, what I wanted to emphasize here was how we can use group by and summarize in, in this context to look at the average for each year, right? We can take our data, we can break it down into separate blocks, separate groups. Within each group, we can then calculate a statistic like the mean, like a total, like a count, right? And then we can feed that into the rest of our pipeline to then go ahead and make a plot like this. And we've seen in previous episodes how you could go about Going, going ahead and cleaning up that figure. I'm not gonna do that today because I wanna move on and show you another way that we can use group by without summarize. For the second figure that I wanna generate for today's episode, we're gonna use group by in a different context. Yep, we're gonna again use group by and summarize, but we'll do another group by uh, so that we can look at the temperature anomaly over the course of a year. So I'm gonna come back to the beginning of this pipeline actually and steal a few lines. So I'll go ahead and bring that down. And so now we've got local weather, our select, and our year. Um, I'm actually going to leave um, this year's data, 2022 data, in the data set. If I look at what we've got, we again have the date, the Tmax, and the year. I'm also going to generate the month because I want to look for each month within a year. So we'll do month equals the month function on the date. And I forgot that I have a pipe down here, so I'll go ahead and rerun that. And so now we see, yeah, January is month one and this is 1892. We're in good shape. All right, so now what I wanna do is go ahead and group my data by year and month to get the average temperature within each month and year. So how are we gonna do that? Yeah, we're gonna do group by and summarize. So again, we'll do group by, and now we're gonna use two factors to group our data, right? We'll do year and month. And again, if we look at that output, we see now that like before, we have this groups line in the output, but now instead of just having year, we have year and month, and we see that there's 1,558 combinations. So that would be like 130 times 12, give or take, because uh, we also have seven or eight extra months for this year, right? Good. So our data is grouped by year and month, and now for each year and month combination, I wanna get the average temperature. So to do that, we'll then do summarize, right? And so now I can do T max, equals mean on T max. This then gives me the year, the month, and the T max, the average temperature for that month. I also get this output that the summarize has grouped the output by year. And so the way group by works is that uh, when you combine it with summarize, it removes the grouping to the right, right? So our data is no longer grouped by month, but it's grouped by year. That's the default behavior. I personally prefer to strip off all of the grouping after doing summarize. You can do that with dot groups equals drop. And so now in their output, we no longer see anything being grouped and our data is totally ungrouped. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and let's pipe this into ggplot. So the ggplot AES X equals month, Y equals T max, and then our grouping uh, for a line will be by year and our color will also be by year. And then we'll turn this into a geome line to make a line plot. And so now we can see over the course of a year 
that it's much warmer, uh, say, in July than every other month. Um, I can say that with assurance because it's about 90 degrees outside here, which is much different than it was back in January or February, right? So what I'd like to do now is, again, normalize for each month. So again, between 1951 and 1980. And what I'd expect then is to have a horizontal set of lines right at zero, so that the average of those lines would all be zero. Um, and so we're gonna normalize for each month. So it's gonna be a lot like what we did up above where we normalized by year, but now we wanna normalize for each month between 1951 and 1980. This again is where we're gonna use a group by without summarize. So I'll go ahead back up here after my summarize and do a group by month. Because again, I wanna look within each month within that year range uh, for the average, right? And so we can then do group by month. And instead of summarize, I'm gonna use mutate. And I will go ahead then and say normalized range equals year greater than equal to 1951 and year less than equal to uh, 1980. And so this gives us our false. So I didn't have to do this normalized range step after group by, I could have done that before group by, but because I just wanna have one mutate statement, I went ahead and did it after the group by. Um, there's no problem with having multiple mutates. I just wanna keep things as compact and simple as possible. Now I'm gonna do normalized uh, temp. And so here again, we're going to use the trick that we used up above, where I could then take sum of t max times normalized range divided by uh, the sum of normalized range. Right. And so now I get my normalized temp within each um, month. And I can double check this actually, by sending this to a filter. So if I do month equals equals one. I then get all of the January data, right? And I see that the normalized temp is the same for each month. And again, if you look back up here at the output, we see that each, um, each month has a different normalization factor, right? And so, you know, we could look at that, right? We could do something like uh, ggplot AES X equals uh, month Y equals normalized temp and geom line. So yeah, so this is the average temperature for each month between the years 1951 and 1980. That's not what I want though. I wanna subtract the normalized temp from the observed or the average monthly T max. So now what I'll do is T diff equals T max minus normalized temp. And let's go ahead and see what we get here. And so now we see um, that we have the year, month, T max, normalized range, normalized temp, and the T diff. And again, that's going to be a T diff for the month and the year. I also see that my data is still being grouped by the month. So what I can do to get rid of that, because I don't have a summarize to remove the grouping variable for me, I can add the ungroup function. So I can do ungroup. And so now when I look at the output, I no longer see that groups uh, line in my output. Cool. Now we can go ahead and as we've seen before, pipe this to ggplot. On my x-axis, I'm gonna put the month. The y, I'm gonna do t diff. And then we're gonna group by the year and color by the year and make line plots. And again, what I expect is to have a bunch of lines that are more or less horizontal. They shouldn't have any seasonal trend to them. Um, and so it should be flat with an average right around zero. So yeah, we get a whole bunch of horizontal lines more or less, right? Where the average is right about zero. And what this view allows us to see more easily is the temperature anomalies, right? And so because every month is basically um, normalized to the same average, it's much easier to see, wow, this year in October had a really low average temperature, right? That it was about 16 or 17 degrees cooler than it normally would be in October, right? And so what we might do is, again, I could plug into this and I could do something like filter month equals equals 10. And then I could do like slice min on um, the minimum value on t diff and let's return like five values and so this returns then the five years that had the coldest octobers and so what i see is it's very interesting to me that the the normalized temp for the month of october was 17 degrees and the temperature difference was 17 degrees cooler and that the t max was zero 
um, the average Tmax for that month was zero degrees Celsius. That seems a little bit odd to me. So I'm gonna come back up here um, and I'm gonna go ahead and look at the output of uh, these first three lines. Again, this gives me the date, the Tmax, the year, and the month. And again, I wanna filter on year equals equals 1950, month equals equals 10. Um, you can use a comma for these. I generally like to put the and sign in there. And so what I see is that for the first 10 days, the maximum temperature was zero. Let's go ahead and look at all of them. So we'll do print n equals inf. And so what I see is that every day of the month of October in 1950, the maximum temperature was zero, which seems weird, right? So I'm not buying that. And that makes me remember that if I go back to local weather, then when I did my pivot wider, I filled all NA values with zero. And so I think that may have been a mistake. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that uh, and assume that if it's an NA, it's not a zero. So I'm worried that there were Tmax values that were actually NAs that I'm now changing to be zeros, which is not what I want because if it's a temperature, um, then it should be have an observation and shouldn't an NA doesn't mean zero, right? Whereas I think when I went through this, I thought that an NA for precipitation would be zero, but the more I think about it, I think it's probably best to leave it as an NA. So again, what I can do is save local weather. I can come back and resource it and then rerun all these commands and we'll see what that does to our October data. Uh, so when I ran the first, it says removed 130 rows containing non-finite values. That's because there's an A values in there. So I need to go ahead in here in my select and do drop an A on Tmax. And let's go ahead and try this first plot again. And so now the error message goes away and we now see um, that we don't have those error messages, good. And so now again here in the second plot where we're again looking across the year by each month, I can again do drop an A on Tmax. And now I see that there's actually no October data uh, so we'll go ahead and remove all this filter stuff. And so now I've still got this filter in here looking at the coldest Octobers, and I see that 1950 is gone. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put this back to the ggplot and let's see how that changed our figure. So we see that the 1925 and 1917 Octobers were quite a bit colder than all other Octobers, but certainly not minus 17. Again, we did our best to identify anomalous data in the last episode, but as we go along, we might still discover things that look off and we always have to approach our data with a little bit of skepticism to make sure things are, you know, they're actually going on what we think are going on. All right, cool. So we have each line colored by the year. I don't find this super helpful just because it's just a big mess of points without any separation. So what I'd like to do to kind of close out this episode is to go ahead and color in the line for the current year 2022. And so again, we had a variable up here this year, which is 2022. So I'm gonna go ahead into my mutate statement to make another variable that I'll call is this year. And that is going to equal year equals equals this year. And again, if I run all this uh, from the end of that mutate statement back to the line 21, I now see I've got this extra column is this year. And of course, if I pipe this to tail, I now see, yes, <laughs> these years, these months in 2022 are part of this year, good. And now I want to remove that tail and I'm going to group it by the year, but I'm gonna color by is this year. And I can now see that I've got this, you know, <laughs> cloud of salmon lines with this green tealish line for the year 2022. And I haven't done a whole lot of kind of primping my plots, but let me go ahead and do that here just a little bit to kind of show you how I would change the colors. So I could do scale color manual, and I will then do breaks equals um, false and true. And then my values, um, I will make the false uh, light gray and my true, the year 2022, I will then do uh, Dodger blue and let's go ahead and do theme classic. And while I'm down here, let's go ahead and turn off the guide. So we can then do guide equals none. And so now we see our plot where we have 130 years worth of data in gray. Again, each year being a different line, normalized by month between the years 1951 and 1980, 
but with this year's data being shown in blue. So on the whole, my takeaway from this plot would be that so far in the year 2022, the temperatures in southeastern Michigan are about what they were between the years 1951 and 1980. Of course, you could come back to this normalized range and change the range for any year that you would want. And so I'd encourage you to try that out. Maybe use uh, a more recent set of years to see, again, how does this year compare to those years, uh, those data over the past 20 years. Again, I encourage you to play around with these plots, play around with the data. I've been really excited to see the comments you all have given me about your own explorations of the data from your local weather stations. I hope you enjoyed seeing different ways that we can use group by both with and without a summarized function to follow it. And we also saw in the second approach where I did group by and then mutate that I could do ungroup to remove those grouping variables. Well, again, keep practicing with this and I'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.